How do we develop the best, most capable robotic platforms to enable scientists to get their experiments executed? Where did this concept of open trans AI come from? We noticed that at some point, ChatGPT's model had ingested all of our open source documentation. With automation, the customers historically might have to spend many hours, if not longer, trying to you know, develop the right code, whether programming it themselves or using an FAS. But now with AI, you can really collapse that time. Just translating kind of high-level instructions through natural language can instantaneously convert that into code. We're uniquely situated to do this kind of work, and I think that's why we've had um, such good results so quickly. It's about having great documentation. So that makes it really easy for these LLM tools to know how to write our protocols. But then we also have flexible hardware, so we have different ways to set up the robot so we can do many different kinds of applications. We can move fast with the team that we have. We have machine learning people, we have front-end engineers, we have designers, we have scientists, we have FAS people. Everyone contributes. The fact that all of this is in-house at OpenTrons is very helpful. We built OpenTrons AI to be a tool that's useful for all of our customers. You can create or generate new protocol, or you can update if you have existing protocols. To facilitate this, we have an intuitive user interface. You enter the hardware that you have, robot, pipettes, labware, and then you enter what liquids do you need, what are the steps of the protocol. Once you have everything filled out in the wizard, you hit submit, the LLM will generate the protocol. And so this is a, a really powerful tool for both the power user, may know how to program and can use this tool to quickly generate code, or for the user that may not have that type of technical knowledge and just wants to get their scientific work done as quickly as possible. In, in terms of confidence, this question comes a lot. So how do I check whether my protocol is correct or not, right? This tool called simulation provides the protocol and it simulates. If it's successful, it says it's successful. If it fails, it gives you why it failed. And then with this, we can guide the user to achieve better protocol until the protocol they wanted. With OpenTrans AI, what we're working on now is how can you bring that protocol into Protocol Designer? Which you can then edit with a nice, easy to use graphical experience where you can just drag and drop changes to the uh, protocol. We can keep using that user feedback to set a strategy and drive our direction. Like everything we do at OpenTrans, our, our customers are um, a huge part of it, and our community is one of the things that sets us apart. We have a large uh, and active community all over the world. One is using from France, one is from using Singapore, Asia, or Europe, everywhere. Thousands of protocols we have generated, so we have a rich data set, and we can improve our models over time significantly. Our long-term vision for this AI age of discovery, to use our assays to generate massive amounts of data, which can then be used to generate better AI models, which can then allow you to make smarter hypotheses, which can then allow you to run even more effective experiments, which can then generate even more data. And that is the flywheel that we're really pushing to enable for all our customers around the world.